The nomads are now in the center of MK territory, less than a mile from the cubs and their mothers Rosa and Zuri. They've stayed hidden, but if the invading males find them, they'll have no chance. The only hope for the cubs at the moment is if the mothers actually lead them away from the nomads and, and raise them on their own. Um, they have to keep them away from the nomads because they will be killed. Nathan's been filming this pride for 12 years. This moment brings mixed emotions. I've been in the bush for years and I've always wanted to see a pride takeover. Uh, so in, in, in some respect, it's an amazing event to see, but I mean, it's really quite sad actually to see the pride falling apart and, and the possible takeover and the chance that these cubs might be killed. And, you know, so there's, there's a lot of there's, you know, the interesting side, but there's the really sad side to it as well. With the MKs split up into small groups, finding them in the dark is an almost impossible task. Nathan returns to camp. Roars wake him an hour and a half before sunrise. He's back on the trail. There's quite a lot of uh, relaxed impala and pukus here, so uh, I don't think the lions have passed through here, otherwise there'd be alarm calling. I might just stop here and listen, see if we can pinpoint their location. Lion roars can travel more than five miles, so the MKs could be anywhere. But as dawn breaks, Nathan can use other bush skills to find them. I've just come across uh, lion tracks going across the road. Um, I think probably the nomads from roughly the area we left them yesterday evening towards the river. It's not the lions he was after, but other signs look a little more promising. There. There's a load of tracks just here coming back the opposite direction. Yeah. Two, three, four. There's quite big ones as well, so I expect possibly um, the punks and uh, a couple of the NKs as well, heading in this direction, which is kind of more their territory. The mixed size of prints suggests males and females, which rules out the nomads. The tracks lead Nathan to the river. Three, four, five, six, seven, Eight. Looks like the MKs, at least. I'm not sure if the punks are with them. They're quite far on the on the on the bend of the river up there. The MKs seem to have evaded the nomads and regrouped at exactly the place where the chase began. So it looks like pretty much the whole MK pride. There's Sarabi. There's Kimba. Kimba survived, but the punks are nowhere to be seen. Still looking out, a little bit alert. But Axel and Mohawk are not here. Kimba and his brothers still need their father's protection. He's probably got some of the most reason to be alert, because if the nomads come in, he will be the one that's targeted. And if he manages to keep away from their teeth, he'll be kicked out. The pride is on edge. This one female's got up and she's coming along. She's looking a little intently, just lower my voice. 
despite tensions running high, there's no sign of the nomads. The heat of the day drives the MKs into the shade. Nathan goes searching for the punks. If Kimber, the other male teenagers, and the five cubs are to survive the nomads' invasion, Axel and Mohawk must return to take back control. But they have disappeared. It's dusk when Nathan returns to the riverbank. This time, the whole MK Pride is there. Axel and Mohawk have, uh, have turned up. Everyone's looking really quite calm and relaxed. Kimber is especially pleased to see the return of his protectors. During the night, Axel and Mohawk drew the nomads far to the south, away from the main pride. Now the punks have returned to defend the family once more. The fact that they've all come together, it's almost like they're trying to sort of show their force, their uh, strength in numbers, and uh, bring the pride back together again. Perhaps running away wasn't entirely about self-preservation. Maybe it was a clever strategy by two wise old males. And the pride shows its appreciation. This is quite funny, actually, that um, Axel never gets any attention. But today, they're, they're so happy to see him, they're kind of rubbing up against him, rubbing their bums in his face, you know, which is kind of like a quite a, an honor. The whole pride is united around the punks. Even Rosa and Yuri, the mothers of the cubs, are here. But the cubs aren't with them. For Nathan, this is a reason for concern. Without having actually seen the cubs, we don't know if they are alive or not. The nomads we know are actually not that far away from here. The threat from the nomads is far from over. Ten miles to the north, the Hollywoods have been enjoying some relative peace. But the pride has been living off scraps. Under the cover of night, Ava has a chance to fill their empty bellies. This is her time. Now she can see the prey better than they can see her. A reflective layer behind her super-sensitive retina bounces light back through her eyes, amplifying the brightness of the animal she stalks. But there's a catch. Unless prey is moving, the lions won't spot it. the Hollywoods miss an easy meal. Ava sees movement ahead. A group of puku. Ava locks onto a male, away from his herd. The rest of the pride fans out.
Startled by an alarm call, the puku runs straight into a trap. Ava and the pride waste no time devouring their meal before any unwanted guests arrive. Finally, the females are back on top. Hey, Love Nature fans. Be sure to like and subscribe to catch all our wild animal stories. Get closer to nature right here on YouTube.